Practitioners often ask Dr. Mapp whether and how they can prove that family engagement causes improvements in student outcomes. In this video, I briefly discuss what it means to show cause and effect from a research perspective. Isolating cause and effect is a key challenge for researchers studying the effectiveness of a program or policy. For example, imagine a school implements a new family engagement program in the fall. That spring, academic achievement increases for students whose families participated in the program. Based on this information, is it safe to conclude that the program caused the improvement? Not yet. It turns out to be more complicated, because there could be factors beyond the program that led to the improvement. At this point, we know participation correlates with academic improvement, but we can't be sure it caused those improvements. Correlational evidence can be powerful and useful, but it can be easy to confuse correlation with causation. For example, this figure shows that both golf course revenues and per capita consumption of cheese increased from 2000 to 2009. However, just because increases in these two things are correlated doesn't mean that playing golf causes people to eat more cheese. Similarly, revenue from arcades rose along with the number of computer science doctorates awarded in the US. But based on this evidence alone, we would not want to conclude that playing arcade games leads people to earn PhDs. There was likely a third factor at play. For instance, arcade revenue and computer science degrees may rise together at times when the use of technology is increasing nationwide. It might be the increase in technology use that caused increases in both game revenue and computer science degrees. Going back to our education example, we know some families participated in the family engagement program and children in those families did better in school. Again, the research shows a correlation, but is there causation? The program might have caused the improvement, but alternatively, there could be factors beyond the program responsible for both the parental participation and the achievement growth of their kids. For instance, it could be that the parents who participated in the program were already more motivated to help their child learn in school than parents who didn't participate. To that end, they helped their kids with homework, signed their kids up for tutoring, and signed themselves up for the family engagement program. Perhaps it was this third factor, parental motivation, that led to improved achievement and not the family engagement program. So how would researchers figure out if the program caused the change? Ideally, we run randomized controlled trials, also called RCTs or field experiments, just like the method medical researchers use to carefully test new medications. In an RCT, some parents are randomly assigned to a treatment group that receives the new family engagement program while the rest are assigned to a control group, which does not get the program. Random assignment ensures that the two groups are, on average, the same in terms of their motivation, race, education, and all other attributes. The only difference between the two groups is that one experienced the family engagement program. This allows researchers to say that differences in outcomes between the two groups are in fact caused by the program itself. Despite this important benefit, RCTs aren't always possible, and there's a lot we can learn from other kinds of research. For example, no one conducted an RCT to show causation between cigarettes and cancer, but a large body of descriptive research made a compelling case for the connection. In education, researchers often use quasi-experimental or descriptive studies. For example, researchers might compare participants in our new family engagement program to demographically and motivationally similar parents at a different school that did not offer the program. The more similar the comparison and the treatment group, the more we can be confident that the program, as opposed to differences between the two groups, helped to improve student outcomes. The more different the two groups, the more cautious we should be about drawing conclusions related to the program's effectiveness. I hope this has cleared up some of your questions around cause and effect.